Hello and welcome. I'm Olga Rowe, and today I'll be talking with Bojan Vojnovic, Head of Marketing and Operations at Clever Cargo, about the challenges of multicultural companies and how Pumble simplified their communication. Thank you for coming and talking to me today. How are you? Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I'm great. Today is uh, a good day uh, outside, so um, that reflects inside state as well. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So let's get into it. Tell me, how would you describe Clever Cargo to our audience who maybe hasn't heard of it? What do you do and what's your mission and vision? Um, well, internally in the company, we call it a Tinder for transporters <laughs> or, or a blah, blah car for transporters. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, Clara Cargo is a platform, a matchmaking platform for shippers and transporters and those who um, own the warehouses. It helps them... Um, uh, it helps them to make the business uh, grow and, and close uh, without any um, flaw of offline work. Um, it's the thing that the uh, logistic industry tends to be less digitalized, especially the supply chain uh, focused on the road transportation, um, less digitalized than um, the, the, the rest of the industries. So our mission is actually to digitalize the industry of uh, road transportation for the beginning <laughs> um, and to help uh, everyone who is involved in that industry to oper operate um, more effectively with more efficiency. Uh, and as for uh, vision, <laughs> uh, our vision is actually um, to connect the whole supply chain and the to connect uh, road transportation, um, trail transportation, harbor transportation, and air transportation in one moment, um, mm -hmm. and to help companies uh, who are operating on a global, global manner um, to actually have this contact from the point one uh, to the point, I don't know, 35 <laughs> or how many uh, points they have uh, because right now with the globalization on such level uh, it's hard for companies who have a lot of uh, export and import from all over the world to to connect all dots they need to use multiple softwares they need to use multiple um papers as well like there's a lot of bureau bureaucracy um, because the import and export is done from, I don't know, from Asia to uh, Europe, that from Europe to, I don't know, America or something like that, because um, it, if we go to car industry, uh, it, not every single piece of the car is made on one place. It's rather um, misplaced on, on basically three continents. <laughs> Before it came, it come to to one um one country and get um in one piece that later on we buy, um so there our our vision and mission is actually to to help everyone involved, in, um not only the transportation industry but in any industry that need that uh, they have a need for transportation of any kind to have actually a seamless experience. We start started uh, right now from uh, road transportation um, focused in Europe, um, mm -hmm. but we're going to, in the next five years, um, gradually expand on every part of the supply chain. That's amazing. And it's a big goal, I must admit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's overwhelming when uh, when I think about it, but in general, it's very you know uh, it, it, it's very inspiring to think uh, how we can actually help um, other people to to live their lives better and work with less stress. Yes, and simplified like everything today. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So. 
How did you come to establish Clever Cargo and what drew you to make a logistics exchange matchmaking platform in the first place? So um, our colleague um, worked in one uh, company uh, where they had export and import of uh, specific machines uh, in a specific uh, medical industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had the, the imports um, two or three times per year. And it they needed like a two months of preparation uh, before they could do that uh, because uh, the colleagues of his, they needed to call multiple transportations uh, inside the country, outside the country, um, to call customs, to call freight forwarders, uh, to put everything in a spreadsheet, then to, to, to ask for approval from the bulk management. While they get the, the approval, the, the prices changed, um, and then it was endless, endless process. <laughs> that was also very frustrating. Um, and additionally, um, they found some platforms that were operating uh, in a manner like you can find things here and there, um, but they had the problem to actually enter the platform. The procedures were very, very strict and very long. They needed like a two month or, or even three to, to sign in and to get approval. And when they finally get approval, they got restricted because um, the, the people from that platform were like, oh, you're just going to do it three times per year. Like you're not of interest for us. Um, and that's when uh, Marco, the, 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 the colleague, um, decided to somehow help them and somehow make something that can make their lives easier. Um, and as he did more and more research, he realized that it's not something that would be valuable only uh, in-house and in internal as internal tool, but as something that is super valuable for all um, small or medium um, companies that are growing um, exponentially, um, as well as for the big companies, but uh, as, as a part of the whole supply chain. Uh, so that's when he started to work on it. Uh, he even went through uh, pioneer process uh, for uh, startups and start to, to uh, push a little portion of that product he got is, super awesome feedback and um, eventually decided to, to develop that product as it is today. Um, and the more feedback we got from, from um, potential clients, the, the more we realized it's something that uh, is needed not only from the side of shippers, but also from the side of transporters, um, because small transporters uh, are dependable of big companies that uh, take most of the work and then give them um, a certain portion for certain part yeah. of money, etc. So this platform um, makes, you know, things more equal, <laughs> meaning everyone have everyone has uh, the same opportunity um, to actually come in, uh, and to post their offer or, or to find existing offers and to, to get themselves some uh, work or to resolve a certain uh, challenge they have with transportation. Amazing. So tell me what challenges or hurdles did Clever Cargo face at the very beginning in order to become what it is today? What would you say are the biggest pain points in your industry today and how do you address them? Oh, um, this is an interesting question because we're basically at the beginning. <laughs> um, what challenges are you facing uh, now then? <laughs> um, so the thing is that we grow from um, from ID agency that um, serviced the other uh, companies and in the same time developed the, the product mm -hmm. and eventually we became um, what we are today. Uh, and we are so young that we actually launched our product live uh, 
in the mar March this year, first of March. Um, and the biggest challenges we had and um, we have so far um, is that we're um, in three countries. Our team is in three countries. Um, so the communication was first. <laughs> Uh, first challenge. Um, the second challenge uh, was to actually understand all target audiences, uh, because you can you can understand transporters as transporters. Um, even there, you need to classify certain things, etc. But then, with shippers, you're actually covering so much industries. Um, and every each of them has uh, its own challenges, its own pain points, etc. Um, additionally, uh, we focused on Europe as a launching point you know, for the first year. Um, so the biggest challenge there was uh, number of languages. <laughs> yes, I can understand how that could be a problem. <laughs> Yeah, and the need to ac actually localize everything during the launch. So when you're launch launching something in America, uh, in this industry, you need to have everything covered in English and in Spanish, um, because most of the transporters are Spanish. Uh, uh, actually, not Spanish, but Mexican. Sorry, <laughs> uh, or uh, but they speak Spanish. Um, on the other side, when you're launching something like this in Europe you need to actually cover every and each languages in Europe because even though there is existence of European Union and of general like official language, our target groups are focused on their uh, own language like uh, maternal and they can uh, speak English here and there, but most of them uh, understand or speaks only, only the mother tongue. Yes. Uh, so the localization is currently our biggest challenge uh, as we cannot test it. And uh, the culture differences are very, very, very high, uh, given the fact that Europe is actually as a continent pretty uh, small in comparison to, to yeah. America, for example, United States. So that's that's the the biggest tree so far. <laughs> that's that's good, but I like that you mentioned communication. But we'll get there in a second. Let's just talk a little bit more about Clever Cargo. So, in what way does would you say that Clever Cargo innovates the existing logistics industry? Uh, well, it digitalized, but it's really digitalized the processes. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's different is on Clever Cargo platform in comparison to our competitors is that you actually finish everything on the platform. You don't mm -hmm. need to get off it. Um, most no phone calls, no well, emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> most of the others, um, they work as ad support, I would call it like that. Like you can see certain things, but you still need to call, you still need to write emails. Here, you enter, you find what you need, you bid on the offer, um, the other side accept, and um, automatically we generate um, agreement and we generate a CMR. Um, that's something that's super important for transporters and for shippers in Europe, and you can't uh, do the loading or unloading without that paper um, and generating, uh, generically um, made from the, the information that we already have from registered um, users. Um, and you can download that or you can send it to email or you can even assign that um, to uh, the persons who are driving the truck or who are um, working in the, um, in the shipping part, Doc. product, yeah, or um, warehouse, or yeah. it depends. <laughs> it depends uh, of the business, um, and you can also sign that uh, document to your accountant. So um, 
they can just do the the the, the billings and they don't have to wait for I don't know additional papers or something like that. Um, and the idea here is actually to to save time uh, and to make um, experience seamless and more effective, meaning that all documentation that needs to be prepared is already there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be written by hand, which is happening um, still. <laughs> you know, still. Um, or um, they they can you know, understand each other. Yeah. Uh, we, we go back to languages again and to, to the fact that uh, Europe is um, multicultural and multi uh, there are multi multiple of languages. And we have the situation where, for example, if uh, something is loaded in the Netherlands and needs to be shipped, uh, for example, in Poland, um, there are options that... Uh, the things won't be in the same standard. Yes. <laughs> or if we include um, countries that are outside of European Union, there are additional problems with uh, customs and uh, things like that, where um, ninety percent of the 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 uh, loadings gets through to some custom penalties because some of the papers are not. <laughs> filled in properly <laughs> or oh, no. the, the customs can't find what they need and they don't have patience because they have a lot of other trucks as well and they're like, just it, it's not here so here mm -hmm. here is the penalty for you <laughs> and, oh, boy. yeah and, and it creates a lot of bureaucratic uh, issues mm -hmm. um and additional thing is that um in Europe only, 70% uh, of trucks are going back empty from the, the the pointing route. So they go full from the starting point to the to the end point, but then when they need to go back, uh, in 70% of them goes empty. Wow. Um, and yeah, and that's actually really, really a huge number, and it creates a ton of unnecessary emissions, um, et cetera. And additionally, there are uh, certain laws in the um, European Union that, um, that have uh, um, they created a certain number of days um, in which the truck needs to go back. So they can't just sit there and wait for the loading, but uh, they just need to go back in, to the starting route in a certain number of days. That yeah. explains it. That explains the 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 yes. fact that they're loaded when they're coming back. Yeah. So the, there's two things that we tend to, to solve here. One is the unnecessary emission of gas <laughs> uh, because they just go back and forth, um, and um, if if they are loaded on the time uh, and they are loaded fully, it will be less back and forth. Um, yes. And the second one is that uh, companies are losing a lot of money, uh, both transportation and shipping companies, uh, transportation companies, because they need to pay the driver. They need to pay uh, the truck, um, all the revisions, all certifications, documentations, uh, et cetera, and including the, the fuel, uh, which is uh, not so... <laughs> For the Boeing, and yet they are losing business because they can't just sit there and and wait. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, um, shipping companies, if they are not big and they don't have logistic office inside of inside of their, their own house, mm -hmm. they usually have a problem to find a proper um, transportation company because they don't know from where to start. And other platforms that are uh, solving similar problems are, are either too localized or they're just focused on freight forwarders and transporters. And uh, when someone who's not a transporter and doesn't understand transportation industry enters those platforms, they don't know what to do, where to look, how to 
to to to find at home and how to actually post offer that can be posted because information they need to fill in are not understandable. Like for example, um, there are information about trucks that only truck drivers know. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're, uh, for example, if I'm producing, I don't know, a honey, a tons of honey, and I need to transport it, I know a lot of things about honey, but I don't know a thing about the truck. So <laughs> um, they drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, so that thing we're trying to to solve, so to 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 uh, make less emission, uh, to save money, um, to actually gain more money, to grow businesses, and uh, to allow shippers to actually uh, be in charge of their shipment. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So. You mentioned before that as a company, you guys are located in three countries. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So does your company operate as an on-site company on three locations, or do you have a hybrid or even full remote system? Uh, we are currently in a hybrid mode. So our headquarters are in Amsterdam, uh, while we have two offices uh, in Novi Sad and one in Bratislava, and we are currently working on uh, opening um, office in Izmir and um, in Malaga uh, until the end of the year. Uh, so what's happening there is that we all uh, communicate through certain digital tools and um, as humble. <laughs> That's why we're here today. Uh, and, and we uh, focus on asynchronous communication through uh, tools like Notion, um, etc. And we uh, go to each other offices as well. Mm -hmm. So, and we have a certain part of uh, the team who is working uh, remotely. So it's a combination, but in general, I would say a hybrid. Hybrid. Well, what would you say are the biggest challenges in these new ways of working, especially in a hybrid team like yours? Oh, well, um, com communication is always <laughs> a biggest challenge, especially if you have uh, cultural differences uh, mm -hmm. involved here. Um, for me, um, remote work or hybrid work is not a problem um, or a challenge. Uh, I'm used to that. I used to work in pre-pandemic -pre remote. Actually, this is my um, comeback to the office. <laughs> you can call it like that. Like for most of us. <laughs> uh, um, and when I say communication, I, I mean on... Um, organized communication mm -hmm. and focused communication that actually uh, solve things, um, especially in this uh, process of building something from scratch, um, testing multiple markets um, where we need to test fast, we need to test effectively, and we need to move on or double down um, depending on the results, so we need to be super agile. And there are things that sometimes get forgotten, sometimes get misunderstood, sometimes misinterpreted. So it's a combination of everything. Um, but luckily, um, we are well, very agile, agile in, in that point. Um, but that's something that is basically a topic of ongoing work and improvement. Yeah. Clever Cargo is a pioneer of connectivity in the logistics industry. Is connectivity something that's important to you within the company as well? Yes, uh, it's really important to, to connect and we work um, on that through our onboarding and later on uh, through all the meetings, talks, or, or, or work um, to understand how to connect uh, with each other on the best uh, level, how to understand each other, and how to support each other. We are still a small team, like it's around 30 people right now uh, in three countries. 
and we can't always be with each other. We can't always, um, you know, chat, but we tend to have some organized things and uh, to find a way to know each other and to support each other through, through certain uh, activities and to certain talks that, that allow people to actually express themselves and to express their ideas when it comes to work. Um, what we tend to nurture here is, you know, to say everyone, it's, you're going to work in startup, it's going to be hard as hell, uh, but we're going to support each other and we're going to, to make uh, everything as smooth as possible in that um, area of, um, you know, um, connectivity um, yeah. and you're super free to say anything you think you're super free to uh, suggest any idea and test any idea we just need to move fast that's the only condition <laughs> so let's you know let's always uh, talk all openly let's be frank and uh, let's just uh, move on as, as uh, fast as we can. <laughs> That's great. Yes, I think I agree with you. It's very important to be connected and everyone to be involved. Then you can yes, really grow. Hard, uh, especially when, when we have a uh, few languages involved. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, not, you know, not everyone has a, a good level of English meaning. Like they can talk, but sometimes they can't express the same yeah. things and same emotions and and same ideas as they can um, in their mother tongue. Um, so we tend to, to, to have as much understanding for each other and, and to go through, through certain uh, topics on multiple levels and from multiple points of view so we can uh, understand <laughs> what's going on. Yes. So let's go back from Clever Cargo to Clever Cargo and Pumble. So... How did you discover Pumble? Which feature or features attracted you to Pumble in the first place? Oh, so I used to use Pocketify. Um, before I joined the Pumble, before I joined Clever Cargo, <laughs> before I joined Clever Cargo, um, I worked as a consultant. Mm -hmm. So I had the need to, to, to actually measure um, my time when I work so I can do the reports for uh, for my clients. Um, and then when we started working um, here and we, when we realized that we are going to have four offices and it's going to be more than, uh, you know, more than one room where everyone is, um, we realized we need a, a, an app that can help us. Uh, at the time, uh, most people used uh, WhatsApp and Viber to communicate in, in um, addition with email. Um, but we decided that we need something that will be only for business communication and that can uh, help us to find um, things faster. When because you know we communicate a lot um, during the day and all those things get lost and we can't remember where we write everything and we use telegram as well so what's viber and telegram so it was a mess in one moment yeah so many places at once yeah. you don't know where to look yeah and um i remember we were talking one night that we need something uh to to, to focus all the communication because we we're going to go crazy if we need to spend you know uh even a minute to, to to, to find something because that night we, we scroll for an hour through, through certain chats. And I was like, you know, in all companies that I worked remotely like the last 10 years, we used Slack. Mm -hmm. But we thought that Slack maybe would be a good option. Uh, but then I remember that you guys also uh, launched uh, additional product next to Flockify. So I was um intrigued to to try it as well because i liked uh, clockify 
Um, and we were thinking like, okay, this is also a local and global thing. So let's let let's try to make it work. And we started implementing it and really, really fast we saw um, improvements in communication because we were able to create channels, groups, and um, to actually uh, search through things faster. <laughs> It's great to hear. I'm glad you adjusted quickly. But which features would you say are the most important to your company and your communication? Um, well, there are a few of them. Um, first is definitely to have um, channels that have that have their own topics, uh, so we can um, whenever we need to speak about something, we can go to that specific topic. Um, also, the ability to have uh, secret groups um, mm -hmm. because some things are, even though we are super transparent uh, with each other, there are some things uh, that, you know, sometimes needs to be communicated with small uh, group of people, um, not because we want to hide something, but because we don't want to um, make anyone worry about something until we, don't figure it out what it is and um we figure out how we are going to figure it out. <laughs> um uh additionally um I really really love the option to have a guest. Uh mm -hmm. and that's uh that's basically the, the reason why we went from free to paid. Mm -hmm. So it's not the the memory, it's not this or that, it's because we were able um, to go to multiple and single guest uh, channels. Uh, so in that way, we can connect with our partners and the agencies we're working with and uh, all the people who are not in-house in yeah. <laughs> things and actually select what they can see in which uh, um, discussions they can participate in which not and that help us to actually move really fast but in the same time to have uh, privacy and to protect um, everything that needs to be protected you know yes. uh, when, when it comes to, to business operations. That's great so you mentioned before that on a daily basis you guys send each other lots of messages uh, all over the countries so how did Pumble affect communication and collaboration within your team? Oh, it helped. It helped a lot. <laughs> and it helped a lot because um, now we can, um, we can solve things faster. We can also, um, if we can solve something during the chat, we can jump on the call really fast. We don't have to, you know, create meetings, go to list, and then it's just like, we can't figure this out. Uh, let's just jump on the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and that's also the feature I, I love really much about Bubble, that it has a combination of, of everything. Um, it also helped us to um, be connected with each other because that's really, really challenging when you are in three countries. <laughs> and when everyone has a lot of work on, on their plate, because you know how they say in startup, like one person is usually doing uh, work for at least three person. Um, so it's, it, it, it tends to be overwhelming and especially if you uh, sum it up with speed that startup needs to go with. Um, it's really challenging to just rely on regular meetings through video or to to calls or uh, emails. Even like emails are cool when you need something set in stone, but for really quick updates, quick questions or suggestions, or something is burning or something is blocked. <laughs> <laughs> you just need like a fast typing and tag someone and like how do you fix this <laughs> what's going on <laughs> i remember that um uh, it was i think sometime in march or, or april um i was doing like five things at once and 
Um, I entered the Figma to to go to go through uh, certain layouts uh, that I needed to send um, to both the developers and to agency for translating and vice versa. And I clicked something and everything went like without color, just just you know the 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 red lines and. I was thinking that maybe potentially like the designer is going to you know burn me or something. <laughs> but <laughs> um I was able to actually communicate with him fast and he just um sent me like uh, it's fine, you just click this and that and um, he helped me solve it really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And if I and you know I didn't have his personal number I didn't have anything that could help me actually con connect him uh, to to this um, challenge <laughs> yes. this challenge <laughs> help you yeah solve the issue yeah so we had multiple situations like that where um, really the, the having the app like Fumble helped us to solve um, anything. Uh, that happened really fast, no matter where we sit. Like I had a certain uh, situation where I'm at the airport and we need to solve something quickly, or in the other office, it's you know, or I'm even in the car, like traveling or or something like that, and I can just um, go to through the messages and realize what's happening mm -hmm. um, and how can I help and support someone or vice versa. Like if I need help, I can reach out and get the answer quickly. Um, of course that has its own perks. <laughs> and the thing that sometimes you would mute 24 seven to your phone, but- That's why we can mute. We can yeah. <laughs> notifications and yeah. we're out. <laughs> uh, that, that the um, on some moments like I just go and say like like now like I'm going to call with you and just like mute it for two hours. <laughs> Beautiful. And and if I sometimes when I go to to meetings and I'm like muted for thirty minutes because the the meeting should be like fifty minutes and then I just hear the sound and I'm like oh boy this is going out of the control. <laughs> So maybe it's not an official feature, but for me, it's it's functioning as an alarm clock as well. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So tell me, you mentioned some different uh, communication apps and, and platforms. Uh, in your opinion, what makes Pumble stand out from competitors and who would you recommend it to and why? Um, well, I used uh, Pumble, I used Slack, I used Teams, um, what I used, like, I am not even going to mention, like, the project management platform, mm -hmm. but solely, like, communication ones, and of course, you know, the Telegram, WhatsApp, WhatsApp Fiber, but I don't think it's just, like, compatible <laughs> competitors, and I like the Pumble the most, um, because it's, really easy to use it's easy to onboard people it's easy to uh track who is onboarded who is not who is in which plan um who has um uh, what options of uh, you know see to see things to use things etc you can um easily see uh how many um, gigabytes of memory is used or not like I, I, I'm talking here from the perspective of you know own <laughs> workspace that really helps me uh, to understand what's happening um, and it's really really easy to scale your team with mm -hmm. with Pumble and I didn't have that experience with other tools uh, especially not with um, and I don't really have to to, to create any specific onboarding for uh, people who are joining the team. Um, it's you know it's really seamless and effective, and I really love it for that. Um, and additional perk is that um, it's not so effective for our budget. Uh, so I would definitely definitely recommend Fumble for uh, companies that have really, really fast space and that needs 
um, really seamless onboarding and seamless communication um, if they are fully remote or hybrid uh, because with other tools, uh, you really need to have onboarding process yeah. for, for teams. And sometimes it's challenging to onboard someone in the office and not uh, yeah. uh, remotely. So that's uh, th that's something that really, really, uh, you know, resonates with me. And I would change the tool for <laughs> anything. That's or great. So... Uh, if your story inspires someone to start using Pumble right now, which tips would you share with them? And is there a particular option or a feature you wish you'd known about earlier that you'd like to share? Uh, well, I will tell you what I tell everyone who joins this company. Uh, when it comes both to Pumble and Notion, I'm just like, play, play with it. Um, it's uh, really easy to use. You can't, you know, broke anything. <laughs> and even if you broke, it's fixable. Um, so just play with it, create whatever you need, search, uh, try to find a way to use it um, the way it's the best for you and the most effective. Um, and I always... Uh, I always uh, say to people, uh, try to find what you need um, with your own, you know, uh, uh, pace. Um, and I never give give them all the channels and things like that, so mm -hmm. so they can um, they can onboard themselves on the platform, basically. Meaning, like I add them to the channels, they they're obliged to be in yes. based on their team but for everything else i'm like you have the search here and try to find what's <laughs> what's the best for you uh, so definitely uh, i always tell people to create their channels and uh, to to use it in the maximum capacity mm -hmm. either than um, that i don't think i, I would um, highlight any features specifically, um, but for managers and workspace owners, I think the guest channels are also um, something, something that's worth mentioning. As I said, that was the reason why we were converted <laughs> to paid. So um, it's definitely something that can help uh, companies. It doesn't matter if they are uh, small or big or in office or uh, remote or hybrid. Um, to collaborate with their partners, with their consultants, freelancers, agencies, whatever, in a really, really fast pace, no matter, no matter where uh, those consultants and agencies are. Like, if we are in four countries, all our, our partners are, like, in additional five. So, <laughs> so that, that, that really helps. Awesome. So we're almost at the end. My last question for you would be, how do you see Clever Cargo in the future? And are there any innovative moves we can expect from Clever Cargo in the future that you'd like to share with our audience? <laughs> really? Anything you're allowed to say. <laughs> um, well, I, I really see us as the leaders in the um, supply chain management uh, in the next five years, uh, definitely. Um, I would like for us to, to cover all those things from vision and mission that I uh, told you about in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and as for things that we are preparing currently, uh, we are currently working on um, containers and uh, on um, transport that is tied to harbors. Um, so that's a news that will come uh, until the end of the year together with uh, localization in Turkey and in Spain. Um, so that's something that we're really looking forward to and we're working hard to, to, to make that happen. Um, and I don't know, it, it, it makes me smile so much because I'm thinking exactly how it, it, it will look once we become... It's exciting! Spain. Yeah, as uh, we envision. Um, so I hope that in a few years we meet again and we actually uh, cover 
additional vision and mission uh, that goes even beyond that. That's great. Well, we wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. And thank you for joining me today in this little story. Thank you, Buena. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media for more content. Thank you.